When I say liquid crystal, you might think of some made-up energy source for a sci-fi show. Bounce a graviton particle beam off the main deflector dish. But this one's real, I swear. Liquid crystal refers to a state of matter that has properties of both liquid and solid crystals. In fact, liquid crystal is important in the construction of LCDs, or liquid crystal displays. These days, liquid crystal displays can be found everywhere. TVs, computer monitors, tablets, smartphones, smartwatches, and even calculators. But before we see how they work, let's dive into their humble beginnings. In the 1880s, Austrian botanist and chemist Frederick Reinitzer was experimenting with cholesterol benzoate naturally found in carrots and discovered that it had what seemed like two melting points. At a certain temperature, the chemical would turn into a cloudy liquid, and it would only turn clear after it reached a certain temperature above that. Reinitzer wrote to prominent German physicist Otto Lehmann about this observation. Lehman discovered that this cloudy fluid contained crystalline structures and gave it the name liquid crystal. Reinitzer found out that this liquid crystal could rotate the polarization of light. Whoa! We gotta talk about polarization. It's kinda important to how LCDs work. While light is both a particle and a wave, we're really only concerned with the wave aspect of it right now. Let's pretend that this slinky represents a light wave moving through space. It's capable of vibrating in multiple planes, like up and down, or left and right, or really any direction in between. This is known as unpolarized light. If we made a filter with slits small enough, only light that is vibrating in one direction could pass through. Light vibrating in any other direction would be absorbed by the filter. This is known as a polarizing filter, and the light that has passed through it is known as polarized light. An interesting trick you can do with two polarizing filters is stack them on top of each other and then rotate one of them 90 degrees. Light passing through one filter is polarized in one direction, but it is incapable of passing through the next filter as the polarization axis is not aligned with the light's vibrations. We can try this with two sets of polarized sunglasses. Look at an object through both sets of sunglasses and then rotate one of them 90 degrees. You should see the image get darker and then turn completely black as nearly all light is blocked by the offset filters. Back to Reinitzer, he found that his liquid crystals could rotate the polarization of light. That means if a light wave that vibrates left and right passed through this liquid crystal substance, it would twist so that the polarization was now up and down. Liquid crystal can exist in several phases and exhibit different properties. The important one for displays is the pneumatic phase. The word pneumatic comes from the Greek pneuma, meaning thread. In this phase, the rod-shaped molecules in the liquid crystal line up so that their long axes are roughly parallel, much like the pins in this classic pin art toy. In the 1960s, RCA began pursuing liquid crystal as a form of display technology. One RCA chemist, Richard Williams, discovered that by applying a strong electrical field across heated pneumatic liquid crystals, a striped pattern would occur. Other RCA scientists discovered how to make this striped pattern occur at room temperature by using a mixture of liquid crystals. Then in 1967, RCA produced the first liquid crystal display. However, it required hundreds or thousands of volts to operate, making it impractical for home use. We need to back up a little bit to see how modern LCDs came to be. In 1911, French physicist Charles Victor Mugian found that he could sandwich pneumatic liquid crystals between two polarizers, twist one to be 90 degrees of the other, and light would be transmitted through the whole thing. This is where we get the term twisted pneumatic, or TN for short. Continuing with our RCA story, German physicist Wolfgang Helfrich joined RCA in 1967, where he began experimenting with Mugian's twisted pneumatic structure. RCA didn't like the idea of relying on two polarizing filters, so Helfrich quit RCA and joined the Central Research Laboratories in Switzerland. There, he teamed up with Martin Schott, a Swiss physicist, and they discovered that by applying an electric field across the twisted pneumatic structure, it broke up, effectively untwisting. Let's see why this is so important. If we were to look at a very small piece of an LCD, we would see several layers. In the back is a mirror, or panel, that produces light. This shines unpolarized light onto our LCD segment. 
The first layer is a polarizing filter, which only allows light vibrating in one direction to pass. This polarized light flows through our twisted pneumatic liquid crystal, where the polarization is twisted by 90 degrees. In front of the liquid crystal is another polarizing filter that's offset by 90 degrees from the first filter. Because the light's polarization has been twisted, it has no problem passing through this filter. However, when we apply a voltage across the liquid crystal, the twisted pneumatic structure breaks up, essentially untwisting. Now, light passes through the first filter where it is polarized. As it passes through the liquid crystal, it does not twist this time. As a result, the light cannot pass through the second filter, resulting in an opaque segment. Note that most LCDs have a piece of glass or plastic as the final outer layer to help protect the filter and liquid crystal from smudges or damage. To see this in action, when I apply a voltage across one of the segments on this LCD, it turns black. To make a color LCD, the display is divided into a number of tiny rectangles, called pixels. Each pixel has three sub-pixels, each of which is an individually controlled LCD segment. Between the second filter and protective glass or plastic, we put in a red, green, or blue color filter over each sub-pixel. By controlling the amount of light flowing through each color, we can effectively mix them to create any color we want. And by combining millions of pixels, we can create a larger display that allows us to read text, look at pictures, and watch funny cat videos on the internet. If you're watching this video on an LCD right now, you're likely watching it on a transmissive LCD. When it comes to providing a light source, there are three kinds of LCDs. The first is reflective. This uses a simple mirror to reflect ambient light into the layers of filters and liquid crystal. Then there's transmissive. A light source, such as LEDs or fluorescent lamps, are directed at a diffuser to create a uniform lighting pattern over the surface of the LCD. Something like an electroluminescent panel may also be used, which gives off uniform light over its surface. The light from this backlight then passes through the LCD layers. Finally, there is transflective LCD, which uses a special polymer sheet between the backlight and LCD. This sheet, known as a transflector, is capable of passing and reflecting light, so you get the best of both worlds. This seven-segment LCD is a reflective display, which means it has no backlight and you need ambient light to read it. Reflective LCDs are relatively cheap to produce and require the least amount of energy because no backlight is needed. You can find reflective screens on things like calculators and early digital watches. Transmissive LCDs require a backlight. They can produce wonderful images in the dark, but in order to see them in areas with more ambient light, like in sunlight, you have to crank up the backlight consuming much more energy. Transmissive LCDs are the most popular on the market as the majority of TVs, computer monitors, and smartphones rely on transmissive LCD technology. Finally, transflective screens can be viewed without a backlight, but offer one in case it's needed when it's dark out. The downside is that they are expensive to produce, can lose some light transmission, and suffer from poor contrast as a result of this compromise. You can find them on some simple character and graphical displays, as well as a few smartwatches where energy savings is a top priority. While we may think LCDs are just a nice upgrade from old cathode ray tube television sets, they've actually had a huge impact on modern technology. For example, smartphones, laptops, and tablets all have the LCD to thank for their portability. While other technologies exist for flat panel displays like plasma and OLED, the liquid crystal display is still the most popular at least for now. A polarized, po polarized sun, about this ob obver observation, observation, it's a real word, <laughs> liquid and solid crystals. It's a lol squid. Important to ow, ow. Particles is light and important to ow. <laughs> <clears throat> Did not make it through that with that. <clears throat>